The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Your leadership partway through are brief on what is here. They are brief on what is here. Not in a great amount of detail, but they're simply shown the evidence which normally changes the very nature of an individual. Because it's hard, you know, it wouldn't be hard for you because you're already acquainted with the angelic realm. The problem is most of your leadership, although they say they believe in God and those things of God, they discount the other portions, such as the throne. How can you believe in God and do not accept what he created? And the fallen angels took advantage of that very thing. Most of the deities in history that you've heard about were these fallen angels. They fell in one spot, but they multiplied all over the earth, from Arachiel, Amaros, Azazel, Gatriel. I'm not going to name them all. These guys fell, went all over the earth, Simyaza being the worst of them, and Azazel, of course, went all over the earth and taught men how to build civilizations. They taught men about war, that was Azazel. He taught men how to make knives and swords and shields and devise things, weaponry and so forth. Then, of course, they continued teaching. These first angels, the chiefs of ten, were bound. They were bound. Only they were bound. Listen to me, only the hundreds of thousands still here. Just so you know that, there are hundreds of thousands still here. That's what you contend with, mostly, and they influence mankind. Now, they still continue to share technology and things of that nature, and they still continue to influence things, but there's something you have to know yourself. There's not one war, one volcanic eruption, not one tsunami, no earthquake, no anything that can happen to this earth without instruction by one of the angelic hosts. You need to know that. Nothing in this world is by happenstance. The budding of the flowers to the rising of the sun, the rotation of the earth and the moon is all controlled. This is why the moon is in a geosync orbit and the same sign faces us all the time despite objects that hit the moon. It makes micro adjustments. So the same sign faces the earth all the time. It makes those micro-adjustments just about every second. That is not natural. It's not natural. There's something in charge. There's an angelic host, luminaries, and so forth that are in charge of everything that you know of. See, when it comes to those things we cannot touch and manipulate, something is in charge of them. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a fact. It's also been corroborated by science because the precision of the behavior of all elements share common constants, a number that does not change. They share this from the smallest particles to the largest of particles. They don't change. The entire universe is based on an intelligent design. Particles are very, very specific. They, they specifically perform a function. And when your leadership finds out that we are, in fact, the squatters, uh, let's just call ourselves, we were put here but the angelic hosts are governing everything. When they find this out, it almost takes their power away from them. It dashes their hopes and everything else because they aspire to be great and prideful men. Well, you can't be prideful if you're at the bottom of the totem pole, which is why since 1947, when it was made popular to everybody on the earth, all the leadership on the earth, a great many things changed. Everything began to change in 1947. Everything began to change in 1947. A lot of people don't know what happened behind closed doors, but the nations of the world were also warned more than once not to accept the ones that were coming, which are again the evil ones that are rising and coming. Now, the more iniquity abounds, the more they, the more they have the liberty to do what they do. Technology was a trade-off. It was a trade-off. We've gone far beyond what people actually can comprehend and imagine. And because you compile learning upon learning, and you end up with super weapons, super propulsion, and everything else. And you know what, Eddie? Strange enough, it wasn't 
Roswell that defined this age that we live in. It wasn't something that happened in Mexico, southern Mexico, and at the same time it happened in Virginia. At the exact same time, and a finding in Montana that actually defined this new era. There was a, in the 50s, it was declared that these things were hostile to shoot them down on site. Of course, pilots tried and they didn't make it. They just didn't make it. They have been back engineering quite a few things, but these things are, are piloted by these fallen angels. Fallen angels are real. You know what, if, if Christians don't get that in their head that fallen angels are real, they're gonna, they're gonna get a shocker. They really are, they're gonna get a shocker. It's not going to be announced to the world about anything. People are just simply going to see it. That would be like you being a Christian and you say you don't believe in angels. You don't believe in angels. Well, that wouldn't make sense at all. That would almost be like all of us saying we don't believe in the Son of God, but we believe in God, just not the other stuff in it. Well, that's foolishness. Ever since that time, they have, been, they have had an agenda to confuse Christianity. Many, many books have been written deciphering ancient texts and they did it wrong on purpose they did it wrong like as we discussed the planet Nibiru there is no planet Nibiru that was a misconception they did that on purpose and so you have the world's top linguistic teams still deciphering things today and there's no such thing as Nibiru that was a plant they even mixed some of the names up An, Anu, Enlil, the Herstock and all those characters they mix that up too, to throw people off. You see, if you introduce some kind of uh, uh, ancient text and you mess up the meaning of the ancient text, you mess up the meaning, everybody discards the ancient text. Then it makes you wonder about all ancient texts, including the Bible. This is called one of the devil's seeds he sows. But that actual word for Nibiru was the throne. That's what it was the throne. With the word replacement, you'll find a very similar story. There were good angels and bad angels in operation in this world a long time ago. Good and bad angels. The chiefs of the bad angels were bound. The chiefs of them, not the other ones, they weren't bound. They went underground in hiding and built places underground, of which they took most civilizations from a long time ago, hid them underground too. But the teams the international teams are working diligently on the truth of those documents. International teams diligently working. Very good guys and very disturbed. It's, a, it's almost impossible to go through these things and not be disturbed. Everybody says they can handle a truth. But when the truth is actually mentioned, that would be like saying, the world is going to end tomorrow. No one would pay attention until midnight. No one would pay attention until midnight. Well, it just so happens that these fallen have a time clock and it seems rules, engagement rules and things they can and cannot do that most militaries take advantage of. Putin is getting tired of it. He does not feel that any nation should be regulated by the do's and don'ts of these things. That's the truth. In fact, Putin has communicated that to the United States a few times. He does not think the world should be confined by fallen angels. Yet no one can do anything unless it's permitted. Even they have their limitations right now. That's because of our father. He has put limitations on them and what they can do. Putin is ex-KGB. He does not want to be ruled by anything other than himself. He doesn't think another species, no matter how old, how intelligent they are, should rule humanity. That's what Putin believes. And so he's operating as a renegade, which will come with consequence. He's operating as a renegade right now. There are some things happening right now that uh, they're just becoming too obvious for people to ignore. And sooner or later, the body of Christ is going to have to entertain that they need to explain this to people. See, it's all, it, it's all a nonchalant conversation until they have to explain it to the body of Christ. Then when they have to explain it, when they find out things were not conventional at all, they're going to be hard pressed to tell people the truth of anything. Because at that time, it's going to be a bit shaky for everyone. Not because of what they can do, but because they exist. 
their influence can be felt everywhere. Yes, I've seen fragments, signs, the deciphered um, fragments, portions. Yes, I absolutely have. You have to remember something. All research, all research is paid research. Nobody goes out there for free and, and um, is approved to do an archaeological dig on something so important. And then, you know, all that stuff is paid research. So whoever pays that money dictates the findings. You see, they also took those things. And the UK was angry at the United States because we consistently renege on deals so they're not quite defined. And uh, some countries believe that this information should be shared. And of course, you guys know America does not. That's just like uh, things that happen around the world. You can't get information from America with things happening around the world. You won't get the truth. But you can go to another country and they will tell you the truth about things. But there's, a, there's even a reason for that. There's a reason for that. And believe it or not, listen, guys, you won't have to access the text. I'm telling you right now, you're going to see it with your own eyeballs. There's no need to access the text. The Bible is enough. I'm telling you, the Bible is enough. If you can read the Bible without any preconceived notions, if you can accept the words of God as they are without attempting to interpret them yourselves, it is good enough, it's accurate enough. Any archaeological dig, they do not want anything found that proves the Bible was right in the first place. But I'm telling you right now, the Bible is enough. It's enough. If you go into the Bible and read it, it is enough. It's enough. Because it's telling you a truth. It's telling you a truth that soon won't be able to be ignored because everybody's going to have to deal with it. The sad part is, it's because people have predefined it through their intellectual minds, like we all do. I predefined things in my small intellect that turned out to be absolutely 100% wrong. So I don't, I, I don't do that with the Bible anymore. I would rather me be the biggest liar in the world and the Bible be most accurate than for me to predefine something and it stand for five years and then all fall apart when everybody needs it at the end. I'm not going that route. That hurts everybody else. If I have a preconceived notion of what God was saying, that, that just messes everything up. The Bible is very sufficient. Now, these, the same thing that happened in the time of Noah has been happening since the 30s, since Hitler got his hands on a crash that happened in the 30s, and it drove him crazy. He just had to have it. Then, of course, most of the lights in the sky you see now, I'd say about... 90% of them belong to us. They don't belong to anything else but us. Because we've come a long way. They've come a long way. We've not stopped developing. We have weaponry that can actually destroy this earth and we move beyond our own atmosphere in exploration. We've learned things about many things. One of the big lies you're going to hear, now here's a whopper. You ready for this? One of the big lies that most people will hear is that these things are from our future and that they are, in fact, us. That's a big one. That's a huge lie. You're going to hear about that lie, that they're us, and they're trying to not let us make that same mistake. They're trying to change something. Isn't that stupid, though, if you think about it? But do you not know how many scientific minds will accept that premise and run with it? I can tell you this because they're doing it right now. In the meanwhile, Europe is going to be in big trouble. Europe will. Europe's going to be in big trouble. Because while they're thinking about the lights in the sky, the Muslims will take over Europe. China will begin to raise its head. But the Muslims are going to take over Europe. Europe will no longer be Europe. It will belong to the Muslims. And the B system will be further defined. Again, not the conventional thing that everybody thought, because even Rome will be destroyed by the Muslims. Where the Vatican sits, there won't be a Vatican. That'll be done away with. Those plans, they're making plans for that right now. And believe me, they will achieve it because everybody's underestimating what these guys are doing. You see, when you think in a preconceived notion, when you define something before, you're given a proper premise. It sends you off the path of truth into a path that you think is true, but in fact it unfolds a different way because we don't know the future. 
We only know those things that the Lord gave us in his prophecies. But in order to see those prophecies properly, at most we have to wait until certain things happen. We can't define certain things. Tactically, it is a very high probability that Europe will fall to the Muslims. Tactically, chemical weapons will likely be used in the future, in the very near future. And then, of course, we will be at war. By the way, the term now is we are at war with ISIS. Just not more than six months ago, ISIS was not worthy of anybody intervening with. Not more than six months ago. Now, what do you see? I told you guys before they lied about the numbers when they said it was 10,000 members of ISIS. I told you all they lied about that number. And they're still lying about that number. The numbers are horrific. They're astonishing, but things are taking effect. So we can't sit with our heads in the sand. We can't. Radiation is inundating the northern hemisphere. Nobody talks about Fukushima. All RAD systems have been recalibrated. Recalibrated. Things are changing very fast. They won't get rid of the ISIS members. That plan is for people who do not know anything classified. It's also a plan that statistically works out if you're trying to get rid of ground forces with air power and only advisors. It could take a long time to do so to sweep them out. The worst thing that could ever happen in a conventional sense is that we take out some of their fighters and leave the rest. Well, then it's all over. And it's all over. If you make a martyr out of those that died, they will increase their potential around the globe. Again, it's almost like they are watching a playbook. So you will see them react in certain situations. But in some situations, they will not react. They will, in fact, assist by not reacting. So there are a great many things in this world that are very distracting, extremely distracting. That's why it's good to look at the whole picture. Because our principal fight is going to be with principalities and powers. They govern men who have not selected Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If a person has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and they are beyond the age of accountability, they are subject to being Satan loyalists, pure and simple. If they get a taste of money and a good life, it's very difficult to get them back over to see the truth. They become part of a system that is submerged in a delusion. More and more will begin to fall. They'll begin to lose hope in our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. They will begin to lose hope. Here's how that will happen. If you hope for something, here we go with hope again. If you hope for something and it does not come to pass when you calculate it, it would. You will be depressed when you don't get it. People don't understand that they're going to see fearful sights in the heavens. They will experience the earth ripping itself apart. They will see wars, not just the rumors, but they're going to see wars. You see, the Lord said, we'll, we'll, we will have, we will hear about the rumors of war, but we will also see war. People forget the experience in the war part. And they'll often say, well, it's just rumors. No, they're not rumors. Everybody's been frightened of a nuclear war. A chemical war is worse than a nuclear war. A chemical war is worse. There are diseases people don't know about, such as the one that makes a person age within about a week. Can you imagine a disease that breaks down your cellular structure so fast that within one week you have aged about 40 to 50 years? There's actually a disease out there like that. If that gets loose, what will be those repercussions? Can you imagine that? What's going to happen when the drought covers the entire earth and it does not stop for years? What's going to happen then? You know what will happen? Men will become man-eaters. But then there will be a lot of things exposed that you won't be a part of. There are islands right now that exist that you don't know about. Airfields in the middle of the ocean where there should be no land. Biomechanoids running around. People have actively opted to become biomechanoids. They're not really shown to the public, but there are people who have mechanical torsos and everything else. This world has become an abomination. The end, even though if it was a hundred years from now, it's still not, much, not a lot of time left. And they're constantly engaging you in witchcraft. And we participate. Why? Because we cannot conceive that everything in our world 
is absolutely controlled by something. Good or bad, it's influenced and controlled by something. Every step that you take is influenced by something. Every word that you speak is influenced by something. No one... If you understood what was really here, you'd also understand your faith. Like the term faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, right? So faith comes from the word of God. But how many people read the word of God and give their own interpretation, not letting the spirit have its full work in you first? How many people do that? With a preconceived notion, you can destroy your own faith. If you put God in a box, you'll have limited faith. You won't use your full measure. If you conventionalize the future, not knowing what exists today, you're going to be all messed up. What happens when the sky turns a golden color? What will people think then? What will they think? What are they going to think when it's 90 degrees in the wintertime in certain areas? How are they going to feel when six feet of snow drops, where the most they had were about four or five inches? Things are going to go topsy-turvy. The earth will lose its natural orbit. It is also written that the angels will abandon their posts. They won't govern anything for a time. Planets will go haywire. The sun will go haywire. The moon will go haywire. Are you guys ready for that? You know what? The Lord has already sanctioned it. Listen, his prophecy is a road map to what is expressly going to happen. It will happen. No one can change it. No one can alter it. What he already said will take place. What he already said will take place. It's not going to change. It will absolutely come to pass. Now, again, my big concern is that a lot of Christians, we know there's going to be a great falling away. At the time there's a great falling away, many things are going to happen in this world. Many breakthroughs, many unbelievable things, a change in culture. Middle class, upper class, lower class, all that will be removed. It will be one class for the entire world. The monetary system will change. Medical care will be for everybody. The whole system will change to a type of utopia. At that point, a lot of people are going to abandon the Lord, the faith in the Lord. Why? They won't need it. You see, a lot of us have come to Jesus Christ because we needed him specifically for something. This is the difference between loving someone out of motive or what you can get out of that person, which is a false love, and then loving someone with unconditional love. You see, if a person cannot do anything for me, I can still love them. I don't love people for what they can do for me. I don't befriend people for what they can do for me. But a lot of people have. They've been raised in a society, and they're told another dumb phrase by this world, that they have to extend their love for those who can advantage them. They're given terms like, nothing is free. That automatically puts in the head of someone, well, you know, there's a motive behind everything, and it's called gain. Wrong. Yet in the body of Christ, while ignoring those statements, they use them in their mental thoughts. God's love is free. It does not carry a price. We don't love people for what they can do for us. We love them unconditionally, out of love's sake. But there are a lot of people who cannot conceive of that. We don't befriend someone under a condition. I don't trust, listen, I do not trust half the people that are my friends. But they are in fact my friends. You know why I don't trust them? Because I know they're human. And humans can do terrible things. They have that potential. So in essence, they can never break my trust. Because I'm already aware that they can do anything. Already aware. Who am I for anybody to earn my trust in the first place? I'm just like they are. How pious a statement is that? They have to earn my trust. Are you kidding? Is that a joke? What if the Lord said that to us? We'd never get to him. The Lord, but we'd never get to the Lord if he said that to us. I already know people have the potential of doing anything. That, has, that does not alter my love for them. It doesn't alter that. And if it alters yours, that means you love under a condition. When you love unconditionally, they can't, that no one can take that away. Even if they went into the evil depths of the world and began to do horrible things because you love them, you would mourn for them. It would be a great loss to you. 
you can just turn your back and say, oh, that person doesn't matter. You can do that. You'd mourn for them. You would, in fact, mourn for the lost because you do love them unconditionally. But this world and this system is the opposite of what the Lord says. And we've all been raised in this system that dictates our thoughts and how we make decisions. Our lives are a direct reflection on some of those decisions we made. But to have a renewed mind, for your mind to be renewed, you can't keep the world's philosophies and attempt to walk out God's words too. It's, it's not going to happen. It's just simply not going to happen. People would start walking in freedom if they could get over the fact, if they could get over this small thing, people are going to disappoint and upset you. So don't let them. They will do it. It shouldn't alter your love. Ever. Okay, I had to say that. I had to say that. Because one, people don't believe in the angelic realm of witches doing everything in this world, the universe, and everything else. Everything is controlled. And number two, People can't seem to get past themselves to walk in true liberty because they're constantly pointing fingers. Everything in their lives is somebody else's fault. In fact, if you ask someone a question of what, what bad happened to you in your life, they'll point at another person and say, well, this person did this to me and it just destroyed me. I say this, take responsibility for your own life. Be renewed in your mind according to the words of God. Get up and walk in your liberty. Not hanging on to the luggage of who did this, that, and the other to you in the past. The same way your sins are gone, forgiven, or forgotten. Let your past be gone, forgiven, or forgotten. Walk in freedom so that you can see. Walk in freedom so that you can see. And don't complicate the simplistic nature of God's love itself. His love is not complicated. That is the world's philosophy of love. In fact, they messed up the total definition of love. God's love is simplistic. It's not complicated. It's very simple. Hey, listen, I believe in the Lord and His ways. And, and people ask me all the time. In fact, people will attest to anybody. They have never, ever seen me angry. There's a reason for that. They've never seen me angry. Some people in the years they've known me, they've not seen me angry. Being authoritative and anger are two different things. But they've not seen me angry. When I get back, I'll tell you why. You know what? To be angry means something did not go according to your own standards. I don't expect anybody to keep my standards. I don't. To be angry is for someone to do something against those values that you have. I expect everybody to go against the values that I have because they have to learn they're human too. Where then is anger? If we are going to walk sober, we have to remember these things. Remember, learn to, you know what God told Cain, you have to master sin. That means we can master sin too. We feel the feelings coming. You don't turn the heat up when those feelings start to come. You place them under subjection and say, wait a minute, you don't belong here. We don't do this in this temple. Not to mention people who get angry. It takes root in their hearts and it comes back. It'll keep coming back. Let me tell you a story about that. Uh, I won't go into specific things. Yes, you can find this information yourself, so be wise in seeking for it. You will find it. Well, let me give you a hint. There was a president that uh, often he knew all the stars and everything. And one of the stars became very close to this guy. And so he took him on an Air Force base, and he showed his friend from Hollywood what was housed on that Air Force base. The friend from Hollywood was so shaken and disturbed. His wife said that he did not eat for at least four days. He couldn't sleep or anything else. Um, the president at that time, in a like manner, they found him with his head down, reluctant to do anything, and um, cry, often crying in dismay at what they had seen. There was another president that was uh, shown the same thing. After a briefing, this president, when they came into the Oval Office, had his head down on his head, crying. There was another president who came in enthusiastically, and um, this president attempted to get information from what was happening, but during a midterm, he too was presented with the facts, and, and then he just, everything changed. What, what's been happening is this. 
you know, it's all, well, as they say, fun and games. And it sounds like an interesting story, something that uh, is beneficial to know. The fact is, it's not. For the public, it's not beneficial to know. It takes everything. It messes up everything. And as I said before, a lot of people who can take, you know, they can sit inside of a dead body and eat dinner. But when you see certain things, it's life altering. There are some people who are affected by going near them, near their technology. There are some people who cannot absolutely get near them at all because it has a physical reaction. And so when the world's introduced to these things, not by men, but as for their own timing, when they're introduced, you can expect the same reaction from quite a few people. We should have enough knowledge now. We should have enough knowledge to hold on to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ no matter what we see, no matter what's presented to the world. No matter what's discovered, we should have enough knowledge in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, through trials and tribulations, he's been, uh, he's been showing himself to you all throughout your life. But the world does seek to break that bond. Many people give up upon seeing things that are not supposed to exist. They commit suicide and everything else because it shakes the very foundation of everything they thought was real. Everything. And as I said, this is why I don't encourage anybody to go looking for silly lights in the sky. Because if that's like seeking out a demon or playing with a Ouija board, that's what it's like. When you go searching for lights in the sky, it's like you playing with a Ouija board. You're calling on them to come to you. That's what you're doing. Listen, you're the last person they want to get near in the first place. Accept it. Go forward in your life. Be a light in this world. Don't call them. Seeking those things is like playing with a Ouija board. And if you open your doors wide enough, you'll regret it. If there's something worse than a demon, you know what that is? A manifested demon. That's what's worse than a demon. And if you invite them in, you have just submitted your authority and power to these things. So don't do that. Back to the weather models. Yeah, the weather model alarms are, are were not good. You know, this winter, this winter, as I was saying before, this winter could be, um, uh, it could be tasking. I wasn't joking when I said six feet of snow in places that have not ever seen over three inches. It wasn't a metaphor when I said 90 degree temperatures in places this winter that are normally frozen over. And flash freezing could be a problem. You see, let me explain something to you. The air in space extremely cold because there's hardly any, there no molecules that can pack close together. If that cold, intense air begins to come down out of the upper atmosphere, straight down to the earth, it will instantly freeze everything in its path. This happened last year in a few places. People were frozen on their boats. They were frozen sitting up on their boats. Who freezes sitting up in their boats? These weather models are not in the summers being a separate incident from the winter, the summer could be twice as bad. Temperatures. You know what, a few years ago, a lot of us were expecting to see 121 degree temperatures. Well, now it looks like this summer coming up, this could be the summer where 121 degree temperatures are, are normal, but with almost 0% humidity. That means absolute dryness. You know what happens when the snow melts on dry soil and begins to crack it up? Here's, here's another thing that happens with dryness. Underneath the ground, places that once held water, if that begins to recede, it leaves big holes underneath the crust of which whole cities can fall into, mountains can fall into. If a mountain caves in on itself, you're looking at some type of forced earthquake. That's an event. That's almost a land tsunami. With near 0% humidity, it would be very difficult to breathe, very challenging to breathe. With the surface of the earth continually heating on the coastlines, steam will begin to come up on the coastlines. It will be extremely difficult for people to breathe on the coastlines. And you know what? All the planets are doing this. It's just not Earth. All the planets are doing this. Because there's something else externally influencing this entire solar system. Something is coming closer. As far as time limits, we don't know. I've told you guys before, this cluster that's coming does not really follow any known physics. doesn't follow known physics. So no one can tell you exactly when it's coming. There are diseases carried on rocks in space that will no doubt 
enter our atmosphere and begin to wreak havoc on diseases we have no cure against. So that's what the, that's why the uh, alarm hit, the model alarm hit, because it will happen in places where there are strategic strong points, which could cause, and that could potentially be a national security crisis. And even the Lord, you know what that's curious, even the Lord says, those in Judea flee to the mountains and pray that your flight not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath. Do you remember last year when it snowed in Israel? And they didn't know what to do with the snow because they had never seen it. Imagine it twice as bad this year at a time when war could potentially be happening. And Jesus said, pray that your flight not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath. Could it mean that certain places will be impassable in the winter or almost be an impossible task? When Jesus says to pray for something, you need to pray for something. Times, in my opinion, there will be no disclosure, but there will be demonstration. There'll be no disclosure. Listen, they found out the same thing people normally find out about bad spirits. They lie. They lie too much. Most nations don't know who to trust. They lie. The sad part is they're coming here in droves. The drought will encompass the entire earth. The entire earth is going to see a drought. There will eventually be one part of the earth that will just be darkened because the rotation is going to be disrupted. That's happening already. I believe that's, that's actually beginning to happen already. If, can you imagine the rotation of the earth slowing down to a crawl? With the forces involved externally, that could really... You know, our rotation keeps us in the orbit that we're in. If our rotation stops and the moon's tug is different, you're looking at instant flooding in certain parts because, um, of course, the tides are affected by the moon. The water is pulled toward the moon as it circles the Earth. If the Earth were to stop its rotation and all of a sudden jar, that gravitational pull to the water would release instantaneously, causing flooding. You know, it would be hard for anybody to get a firm foothold on land. These were events that you, you can attempt to predict, but... You know what the word said? There would be floods in diverse places, earthquakes and floods in diverse places. We know there's a drought coming because people curse God by reason of the heat of the sun. Now the sun will be directly responsible for burning the skin off of people. In the book of Enoch, it said that at a certain time, near the end of days, the angels would abandon their posts. Seasons will be messed up, planetary orbits will change, the sun's power will not be regulated. The moon's pull will not be regulated. The heavens will be in disarray. And of course, in the book of Isaiah and other books in the Bible, it says that the earth reel and reel to and fro like a drunkard. The stars will change their positions. At one point, the stars go dark. These were events of the future, but you know what? Who can maintain this? Listen, if you begin to go through something like this, you, people think of a... I don't know. Some people have too much of an imagination, right? They're, they're, they've watched one too many monster movies. And what they have not done is renew their mind in the Lord's promises for his children. Because there are certain things that won't listen. The Lord will never place you in a position to make you lose your soul. Okay, that's number one. He'll never put anything more on you beyond that which you can bear. That's number two. He does not seek to destroy you. He seeks to deliver you completely. Number three. So some people have this imagination that uh, the worst of the worst will take place and they're going to be running around with one leg or this, that, and the other. First of all, whatever you go through, you're able, you're created to handle this. But see, this is why it's good to stick to prophecy and not the fables that are about to run rampant. I call scientific findings, a lot of them fables. Do you not know, you know what, if people would actually study the scientific journals and articles, they would lose faith in science. The reason being is because every year, facts change. Now, how in the world do facts change? They would also find that 90% of those papers are based on theory, not fact. An educated guess. They're based on educated guesses, not fact. I can't explain full stop until it's, uh, well, you'll hear that term. I'll leave it at that. 
Yes, they are. In fact, Pastor Scott, I told you they did this genetic, um, they started pulling people's genetics and they found out that certain types of Native Americans, a lot of them in the United States, are directly tied to Israel. The Africans are directly tied to Israel. Isn't that something? That all these tribes that were oppressed belong to one of the 12 tribes. That is, uh, uh, it also lets you know why, because they're of the ancient, listen, those folks are from the ancient Hebrews, right? And we know that even God said the Hebrews were stiff-necked people, which means they get something in their heads and they don't let it go. Hard-headed is probably a better term than stiff-necked. These folks are hard-headed. But we also know that one of Noah's sons was in Mexico. They found that too. We also know that America was occupied, figure this one out, by Egypt and Rome. America had already been occupied. They know this by the pyramids they dug up in Ohio. They know this by the findings in the Grand Canyons. They know this by the items found in Washington State. But what they didn't tell you was that America was also inhabited by the Nephilim. All the Nephilim abandoned. It would appear they abandoned where they were and all of them came to the U.S. Because all the Indians and the cowboys of ancient days have stories when they came over here and what did they see? In the hills and things where they began to build the little gray looking aliens. They were quite violent. Evil. They didn't want to interact with humans or anything. The Indians do tell of giants, like the 43-foot-tall skeletons found in West Virginia. Human skeletons, six fingers, six toes. The ones in Arizona. The ones in Nebraska, South Dakota, Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Carolinas, Mississippi. Isn't that something? The Old Testament is real. How are you participating in witchcraft? through your emotions, making you agree. You know, in the Bible it says, where one or two are gathered my name, I'm there also. You must agree. If you agree in prayer about something, two or three agree in prayer, it's a done deal. Well, guess what? That same principle works for these dark dodos. So, on something they publicize is on television, and they pull you into one of two sides, not knowing that both sides are part of the ceremony going on. No one told you you had to play in the first place. But you see, they know we have this insatiable desire to join one side or another because we have to be part of something, and they play on this. The tablets found in 98 signs? No, I'd rather not comment on that. Rather not. Rebellion is a demon. Anger. You know what? Demonic names. Anger is one. Hatred is one. Depression is one. Demons have many names. They surely do operate in a lot of folks. You know, when you're feeling it, negative emotions, they just don't come out of the blue. They're influenced by things trying to occupy you. And if you allow it to stay within yourself, you're really holding hands with something you don't want to hold hands with. I say purge it from you quickly because it will begin to leave a residue. The world excuses such things, and they medicate you to dampen your nervous system and your receptors so that you can deal with it. Well, what they're actually doing is numbing you to the sensation of being inhabited. And so you're medicated running around possessed, and you don't even know it. That's why some people, some people, when you are about to read the Bible, you have to fight your way through it. It feels like you have to fight your way through it. It feels like every thought in your head comes to you at one time. I had a guy explain this to me, and he was suffering from depression, and he was taking medication for it. Well, he said the medication helped, but it made him feel like a zombie. And I asked him, I said, well, read the Bible to, to regain your energy and so forth. And then uh, he couldn't do it. All these thoughts of everything would rush at him in his head, and he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. Eventually he did, he fought his way through it. Years later, he said no one could have ever told him that that stuff was real, talking about the demonic entities and so forth. No one could have told him or convinced him that was real. But he found out firsthand. Okay, any more questions? Let me see. 
I can't, guys, you got, I can only see, like, uh, when you guys post, I can only see a fraction of what you all can observe. If we stick to the foundations of the words of Jesus Christ and actually do them, not just be a reader and just know it, but actually do those things Jesus told us to do, your entire life has no choice but to change. Your entire life has no choice. There are power. There's power in his words. Certainly when you apply them on your life, you begin to do the actions which is looked upon by the heavenly host. When you actually do what Jesus said to do, you are fully encircled by goodness, by him. Yeah, you know what, uh, you know what, WWI, there are babies or births that, uh, that are strange. But they're so numerous, they have become commonplace. Little kids born with actual tails and uh, this, that, and the other. Really, actual tails. And you, you stumble and get numb to it, but good Lord, some of these... Um, then again, there are experiments. They have to be experiments. Because some people are seem to be bonded with animal uh, traits or something. I have no idea what came out of those holes in Russia. But it does appear that something came out. I don't know what came out of those holes in Russia. But to my understanding, they had a few more. I was thinking, I was, I was trying to go by the ice premise or methane bubble. But if the methane bubble released and it moved that type of dirt, it certainly would have left debris in, but around the hole it didn't. It looks like it was cut through with a hot knife or something. I know there are certain weapons that can do that but not, uh, not a methane bubble. And therein lies another problem. People really, you know, they want to have pride to say that we can, mankind can build anything. But when it comes to actually having something done by mankind, like laser holes, those holes could have been caused by laser. And when it comes to that, they said, well, no, we don't have anything like that. That's what they'll say. But in fact, we do, which makes this next war coming up terrifying. Was there a significant supernatural event that happened to me? I'll say this. I was introduced to quite a few things I didn't want to be introduced to. That's why I caution people about that. When you know certain things, you just can't erase your mind. and You're stuck with that knowledge. And you have to make proper adjustments to continue to live in it. You, you have to still function. Uh, but some things are better left not known. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the Lord does not allow us to see everything in existence because we're, we're, our minds are too young to, um, to endure it. You see, a lot of people say, oh, well, no, I could take anything. I suggest this to you. If you could take anything, the Lord would not restrict you from seeing anything either. He did that on purpose. Some things are not good to know because it, then you have to live with it. You know, what you're prepared for, the Lord will certainly show you because he'll use it to his benefit. But there are a lot of things that it's very understandable for me now, which is why I discourage people from looking for these silly lights in the sky. But as I'm telling you, that's like playing with a Ouija board. If you get fascinated by the unknown Ouija board, yes, things can look beautiful. Uh, things can be absolutely stunning. But listen, those things lie to people all the time. They'll say they're your guardian angels. They'll say a host of things until you mention the name Jesus Christ. Do you know why the military will hide certain bases and everything else? They don't, they don't want the attention, number one, but most importantly, they, they, can't, they, they will not tolerate Christianity to be anywhere near those bases. They can't. Wherever a fallen angel occupies, they cannot allow Christianity to be there. Now listen, policy is slowly changing against Christianity. What does that tell you? And if you don't think they're preparing for the occupation of these things, you need to go look at the Bible again. Christianity cannot be on basis or anywhere where these things occupy. They can't. The Muslim religion is rising, and then it too will be done away with. So a lot of people don't get, you know what, I can see it. I can see it happen. I can see the Muslims have enough tenacity, these radicals have enough tenacity to go out there and accomplish a certain mission to further build the beast architecture and the, the seat of the beast. But I can see them too moved out of the way. I can see them moved out of the way. Here's something that sticks in my head. He will worship a God his fathers knew not. He's going to worship a God his fathers knew not. And if the fathers didn't know the God, it is not a standard Muslim. 
it's something else. He'll take over three, he'll, 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 three kings must fall at his rising. This guy will worship the god of forces. He will not be a respecter as a woman, so he may enter in through some Muslim radical actions. He's not going to stay that way. Even the Muslims are going to get a shake-up. Now, it is said that the character of the Mahdi, when he rises, he's going to introduce something else they don't even know about yet. And if you don't think those things are actually going to take place, look around. It's forming. The architecture is being put up everywhere. Christianity, when it leaves, when Christianity is purged from a place, well, that's for something else to occupy. They can't operate in the land where the Holy Spirit resides. The only reason they have not taken out Israel again is because they're not sanctioned to. The Lord will not allow that yet. And it's so important to remember that God is absolutely in control. And the devil can't do anything until the Lord says, go ahead. But I'm telling you, he's going to say, go ahead. He's going to give him 42 months. And within that 42 month time span, Satan will do everything he can. And that time is coming. And the two witnesses are going to be here. But they'll be overcome by the beast, killed in the street by the beast. And if people don't understand that scripture and they saw the two witnesses being killed by the beast, a lot of people who don't understand that will lose hope. A lot of people, it says the holy city will be trampled underfoot for 40 and 2 months. If no one has ever read that, and they see the holy city trampled for 40 and 2 months, they'll get depressed and say, well, God said he would never abandon them. God said he will stand up for his people and nothing will touch him. Why is this happening? They'll lose faith because they fail to read that scripture in its context, not their interpretation. Everything is for the full deliverance of the children. This is the end of something for all time. Satan will no longer be free to do anything after it's all said and done. What he established will be undone and done away with and forgotten. And then everything will be as it was intended. But... There are other things coming before Jesus gets here. There are ancient deities coming before Jesus gets here. This world is going to undergo a time of testing that never was since the beginning. It's going to undergo it. You know what? I, I don't think in terms of a nation um, actually standing for God. I think in terms of the people. I think just about every nation has a certain, uh, certain folks within that nation who do love the Lord and stand for Him. As far as the leadership, most leadership has been compromised. Our leadership is compromised. They won't even say the name of Jesus when they're giving speeches. They've been compromised. I've not heard Putin say the name of Jesus when he's talking. He's been compromised. I don't hear China saying the name of Jesus when they're speaking. They've been compromised. If they do not, if they do not proclaim Jesus as the Son of God, they've been compromised. And America has certainly been compromised. There was a time that, um, that uh, they did speak about the Son of God, but they don't now. They, they've been compromised. They've kicked it all out. It is not enough to say God. That could stand for anything. You'll hear them say, God bless America. Wh which one? Qualify it. Which one? Which God? That's why in the Bible you hear it, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the son of the living God. They qualify what gods you're talking about. They could be talking about Thor. They could be talking about, uh, I don't know, Osiris or something. We don't know who they're talking about. God already said that they made to themselves many gods. Mammon is over this world. Lucifer is the, is, is the God to many people of this world. They don't belong to us. They're of a different kingdom. What God are they talking about? Then on money, you see, in God we trust with a man's head up there. Are you kidding? What God are they talking about? See, they won't define it. That's the problem. And if it's not defined, you didn't confess it. They certainly don't confess Jesus Christ. And they can't fool me with this, with this God business. I remember one time I did have to testify. And back then, you would say, so help me God, right? Well, I said, so help me God in the name of Jesus. And they made me say it again. And I said, so help me God in the name of Jesus. I still said it. Because I, you, I, I'm not going to say God not qualify. I'm not going to say God not qualify. I, I just can't do that because you don't know what God they're talking about. So I, I have to qualify. Some people are okay with that. And they assume, I don't assume anything. 
You can't put in God we trust and put a man's face on there. I'm sorry, that does not work. That doesn't work. That's deifying something else. They're deifying the person or the philosophy behind the person. I'm sorry, that does not work. You don't put you don't put in God we trust. And then E Porbus Unum on the same you, you can't do all that stuff on there. You know, in these last days, people are waking up to things like that. And they simply won't they, they can't stay a part of these things. I know if it bothers me, it's bothering some of you too. You just simply cannot stay a part of these things. It's almost like a full breaking away of this world system for, for certain folks. Because you begin to see the tricks, the schemes the beguiling, the enchantment, and everything else this world has thrown at you. You cannot stay a part of it. Those things are still out there, by the way, Mayor. They're still out there. They have not moved. Well, I'll take that back. On occasion, they'll go um, in the sun and come out the other side, but they haven't moved. In fact, in fact, th there's a phenomenon that... that uh, it, they're very dark and obscure. They're, they're, it almost looks like a... Uh, something real dark and transparent. They're really trying their hardest not to, not to, uh, not to show them on any footage of the space, of space. But they're not moving. Uh, one did pass through the sun, came out on the other side, and then stopped again. So it's not, they're not natural. I mean, they showed up and they stopped. And to be honest, no one knows exactly what they are. They just can't do anything about them. But I do know this, that Helium-3 can be extracted from the sun. It picked up the particles, concentrations of helium-3. Now, if we could harness helium-3, that would be a, a very efficient power source. That and some super heavy elements would be a very efficient power source. And it's possible that, that um, some of these ancients are actually using that, that helium-3. Okay, question mark, can you please explain what you meant? that when Jesus comes, people will be given a choice to choose. You know, I must have misquoted that. When, when, when Jesus comes, it's over. But we have a choice now. But when Jesus comes, it's, it's all she wrote. The, the uh, curtain will close when he comes. We have our choice now. We can choose now. It's very wise to choose every single day until he comes and to choose the right direction. Most people don't make a choice. They think they still have time. That's the problem. If you think you still have time, and you're not doing everything to choose him. See, choosing him is just not simply saying, yeah, I choose him. That, no, that won't work. All you're doing is honoring him with your lips or telling someone what you, what you claim you have done. But if we don't listen and do those things that he said, his commandments, then we honor him with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. But if we do those things he said to do, then we convey our love to him. A lot of people say, well, how can I show the Lord that I love him? Obey his commandments. That's how you show him how. Obey his commandments, the commandments of Jesus. Those things he told us to do in the New Testament, obey them. He said, if you do that, you in fact love him. And if you love him, the Father loves you. And both of them, Jesus and the Father, will commune with you. But this is an everyday thing. You can't choose him one day and then choose the world the next because you're unstable in all your ways. That means you're a double-minded man. You're unstable in all your ways. And the Bible does say, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. This is an everyday every day. For me, it's, it's all the time. In fact, with most opposition that I face, I'll choose him again and then reassert my choice and then go do exactly what he said to do. And believe me, you're challenged according to his word. And it feels so liberating in pure freedom and peace when you react as he prescribed to react not as your body prescribes to react it builds a confidence and boldness when you do everything he said to do and you're doing that truthfully from your heart you can boldly go to the throne but if you're missing things and you know you haven't done it you're, you're going to crawl and sneak up to the throne what demand can you make of anything if you have not listened to what he said to do you know you have no right to boldly approach anything because you're in a state of rebellion by the way not to listen to him is to be in rebellion that means if your heart is far from him there's no place for that person at the throne in the first place 
But if we do all of what we can do according to his word, then yes, we can go boldly to the throne. We also have full confidence in him. Our confidence won't be shaken. Because you will stand on that fact and say, Lord, I am I am everything I am reading and you sent to do, I am doing it. You know, there's a, um, um, watch, there's a, another story about those four angels in the river Euphrates. These four angels, it was written, were responsible for expelling the Nephilim. These four angels also have the power to hold back time on earth. Time. And when they do stand up, and they also have power to destroy the earth over winds and fire and things of that nature. But when they do stand up collectively, everything stops. And it was written that when they stand up, nothing, nothing, nothing will blow on the earth. No fires will be on the earth. No wind will blow on the earth. The light will stay stuck. Day and night, it will not change. Everything will freeze in place. Everyone who is not accounted will freeze in place. Animals will freeze in place until the tribes of the earth are collected and take flight. They're going to stop everything according to this other text. They will stop everything. And you know what? When you read Revelation, if you look at that after the four angels hold back the four winds of the earth, everybody after that is either in Israel and then the rest of the people are at the throne for some reason. But this is also after the tribulation. I think that confuses people. Now, we're not appointed to his wrath, which are the vials. Now, I really do not believe. You know what? The Lord echoes things. Now, a lot of people, they really, and I've looked at it, but I've also gone through some scriptures. When you take, when you take the revelation, when you read revelation, you do find correlations between certain things. And it appears like they are layered on top of each other, right? However, there are a few correlations that were already spoken of in the book of Isaiah saying they were not correlations. After the angels hold back, you know what the Lord Jesus said this, after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And they will see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds and the tribes of the earth will mourn. And then the angels will gather together his elect from the four corners of the earth. But before that, we're, in, we're having wars and rumors of wars. The abomination of desolation is set up. Those in Judea have to flee. That's called the tribulation. Jesus said in Revelation, the time is at hand. A lot of people think it's coming, but they discard all the terrible things that have happened thus far. We have lived through the time of wars and rumors of wars are still taking place. We have seen, what, you know what, every, all the senses are pointing to Mankind being killed, a great majority of them being killed from animals and plagues and things of that nature all the time. The birth rate is slowing down. It's not increasing, it's slowing down. No one wants to have kids. The population is dwindling all over the place. No one wants to have children. Now the Middle East is on fire. See, if you put yourself in the Middle East, well, then it starts to make sense. We can't look at revelation from our sheltered lives outside of the chaos. We can't do that. It has to be inclusive of everything. We can't look at revelation and say, well, it, it can't be happening now because I'm still watching television and enjoying my day. No, don't, 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 don't do that. This, this is collective for the whole world. Revelation did not apply just for a specific region. So we have to look at things inclusively. Israel, the occupants of Israel, even though they're going to go through a tumultuous time for 42, even before the 42 months, they're going to go through stuff. And if you look at their history, they have. They're the only ones who have gone through the tumult of what they've gone through. Nobody else went through the Holocaust. They did. No one else was shoved out of their land so many times they were. Nobody stands as an offense to all the nations. They do. God's word. That's God's word in total, absolute effect on this planet. His word is true. All we need to do is read it and trust it. The details of his word concerning his prophecies, if you know the prophecy, then when things begin to happen, they can be recalled from your memory and they will make sense. Well, Great Bay, the 144,000, those things that came out of the pit, right, could not touch anything saved 144,000 that they had the seal of God on the foreheads. They did. Here's what gets me. 
John saw a number that no man can number, of every uh, kindred, tongue, and nation at the throne, right? But the 144,000 were not there. Now, why would he have to seal anybody at the throne? He said specifically 144,000 were sealed from the 12 tribes of Israel. Consequently, that's the same number in the book of Isaiah. I'm gonna, you guys are going to, when I show you this in the book of Isaiah, it comes from a Hebrew word meaning the seal. Don't worry, we'll get to it. Anyway, those 144,000 are the ones that he said after he purges Jerusalem, there will be a tenth of them left. They will be sealed. They will be sealed. He said he'll leave a tenth of them, and they would be sealed. There's a Hebraic term that means the seal of all the tribes of Israel. The seal of all the tribes of Israel. You know, the Lord wasn't joking when he said, Study to show thyself approved, because even that little detail, and people have come up with so many theories, but nobody read it as it is. Nobody read it as it is. In fact, I found out through the Word, if you just read it, it, it is just like it says it is. Then everybody's shocked and surprised when it comes out like everybody, like, like the Word said it was going to come out. They get shocked. They say, well, surely it had to be more complicated than that. That's the problem. The Lord said He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If He said He does that, then His Word, too, is so simplistic that sometimes people cannot capture it because they go into it thinking in a very complicated way. He also said, unless you become like these little children, you will by no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. There's something in being simplistic in your reading, studying, but being simplistic, which means throwing off the knowledge of the world. We talk too much like me, I talk too much. In the word, if it says, David crossed the river. We don't read into that. And say, well, what that really meant was he opened a time gate. And then this, that, and we throw stuff in there to justify such a simple act so that we can feel better about it to say it's complicated and it's hard to get this, so I'll have to tell it to you. You know, the Bible is not like that. It's not so complicated that nobody can understand it. That would be against how God works in the first place. A foolish person can't understand it because they always think, oh, it has to be something to this. Just like Satan was cast out of heaven. And people say, well, what that really means is that the dimensional fold took place. And he scattered himself through, oh, please, he was cast out of heaven. That's it. He was cast, he's not in heaven, he's cast out of heaven. That's it. Let's move on. He's cast out of heaven. You see, because some things are interpreted by your soul. They bear witness. You, your soul bears witness. Some things you can comprehend, but there's no way you can explain the definition is in your soul that's built into you. You can't explain it. Some things are very simple. All we have to do is learn God's Word and let Him give the revelation. That stops a lot of arguments if we let Him give the revelation. Because people get caught up on doctrine. They will argue you up and down of what the end time holds. And everybody could be wrong. We don't know yet. But I tend to read it just as it's written. And I let the Lord give me the revelation. And I'll wait until I get it. I'm not going to theorize something and, and tell you what I think is right, and I'll do that tactically. Because I do that a lot, tactically. Not concerning God's Word. I'll find things in the Bible that are very simple, but often simple things are missed. The things we talk about here in COT is not complicated. It's very simple. But sometimes things can be so simple they elude us. They get away from us. Uh oh Mandy. Well, listen, they're, they're working... Uh, like I said, don't, don't think that mankind is, is uh, just living happily in this world. They're under the service of a very dark kingdom. Now they can't let, they're stuck in a contract that they can't get out of. They, the weaponry they build, they're not even in control of their own weaponry. They're not. That would be like you saying you have absolute control over your smartphone when you do not. You don't control what satellite it hooks up to, links up to. You don't control when your data is sent to the cell phone company. Whoever created a thing controls a thing. They just let you use it. I don't know, darling. I've not, I've not seen them. I've not seen them. It, you know what? I, I guess my heart is so much on people being prepared to face the very things they think they won't face so that when they do face it, it's not really a big problem. They can still function. And I really don't look around that much at other things like that. I don't search for things like that, I guess you could say. 
But I guess my heart is towards people making, actually making it. Because I know certain things. Things are going to get rough. You know, if we were the Middle East and we were the Christians that got expelled from our homes, they had a chance to prepare like we're preparing now, but they didn't listen. Can you imagine one day eating dinner and everything, and the next day you got to run for your life? They didn't think they were going to have to run for their lives, but they ended up running for their lives. Had they read the prophecies, had they read the prophecies and heard what would happen in Babylon, even ancient Babylon, that land, they would have said, well, I don't think it's a good idea to settle here. But again, people read scripture, but when it comes to the scripture fulfilling itself, people have an issue, a problem. They can't take it. They won't act on it because they'll look foolish. Now, if those people had moved out of Iraq prior to that time, they would have looked foolish. People would have said, oh, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. But see, it takes obedience, it takes faith, and it takes patience to do that. They would have been ridiculed, yes. But then when ISIS came in there to purge the rest of them, they would have been gone. And then people would have seen, after it was all over, and this is the way it happens, after it's all over, then people justify it, not before. This is why they justify the, the statements of dead people, not while they're living, but when they die. All of a sudden, when a person dies, if they leave a record of things, they become famous. Because nothing is ever justified when you're alive. That's the time of your testing. But now, it's really about to uh, come again. But who's going to look at prophecy and say, you know what, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm prepped, I'm ready. I know that uh, you've not promised me every day as a day in a, in a park. I know I'll face trials and tribulations, but I also know you're with me. I always tell the Lord concerning me, remember your mercy towards me. I also exercise mercy to everybody, because you know what? There will come a day when I'll need mercy. There will come a day when I need peace, so I'm so peace. Anything, you know what, when I read prophecy, and I know these things are coming, it's almost like an inventory list in my heart to say, you're going to need this and this, that, and the other. And so I saw those things in truth. Those who sow discord will likely receive discord at the wrong time. Those who sow hatred will reap that hatred at the wrong time. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap in this lifetime. And if things, Jesus said, things will be cut short. If things are cut short, that means things run a lot faster than normal. All timelines are messed up. They're much shorter. And if that's the case, you're going to reap what you sowed a lot quicker than you usually would. So I take a different approach to the Word of God because I know it's real. I have faith in it. I have faith in it. Okay, someone else had a question. What was that? What happened during the first Earth Age? I don't know. I wasn't here. I, I have no idea what happened during the uh, first Earth Age. I, I couldn't even qualify that statement. But you know what? The, the Lord said that the Earth, it, it was uh, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Right? That's what he said. The Earth was um, void, cloaked in darkness. When you look those, things, those words up, it says the earth was in chaos. That darkness was a different type of darkness. It was in chaos. See, Satan was here when Adam and Eve were created. He was here in the garden. He had already been booted out. Some think it was an angelic world. I do know one thing. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. I know that. I also know that he said that the Elohim said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. People even mess that term up there. It's kind of undefined to them. Yes, I do. Yes, 779, I believe. Here's what I believe when it comes to preparation. This is why you have to have your spiritual ears open. You do prepare physically. You certainly prepare spiritually. Listen, if you prepare physically but not spiritually, you're going to be shaken because you're going to be dealing with things that you never thought you'd deal with. If you prepare spiritually but have not done a thing physically, then your race here could be cut short, right? Because if the Lord tells you, hey, you get some water in your home and you don't do it, you know, that's disobedience. And the Lord said um, that you'll, you'll uh, go through some things for that disobedience. But you have to sit down in the quietness of your secret place and say, Lord, what would you have me, now, what would you have me prepare for? Ask him. Ask him, what would you have me prepare for? He's not going to withhold anything from you like that. He's not going to do it. 
some of us he's placed on our hearts you better have water you better have this and you better have that he's placed it on our hearts shame on us if we didn't do it he didn't place something on your heart that you have an inability to do either he didn't do that not when it comes to preparation it may seem foolish at the time but certainly you have the ability to do it or you wouldn't ask it. it's not going to ask you anything that you cannot do have your ears open to him which is to silence your mind of the troubles and cares of this world so you can hear him that's why you need a secret place to go and meditate about him you meditate about him and you kick the world out of your secret place get into your word I'm telling you that word is alive that word is a living word Sunflower I know that in the word it said listen in, in the book of Isaiah now we read this uh, was it Monday or Tuesday it said this it said that men's hearts that they're going to be so scared because the Lord arises and shakes the earth violently that they're going to throw their silver and gold and cast it away so they can hide themselves in the cracks and clefts of any place they can hide so I know at some point money is not going to help you and I can tell you this too you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast so what good is money going to do you people think they're going to be trading in this that and the other right wrong that system is going to consume this entire earth you know what that tells you that tells you that the currency system will go absolutely digital that's what it tells you right there the reset will be digital currency no one really wants real money anyway See, to go rent a car you have to have one a credit card we, the mark of the beast system is already here we, we have to use ATM cards and credit cards and this card and that card right all they're going to do is consolidate it into some type of mark whatever it may be could be biometrics could be something else but they're going to consolidate and control the system of who can buy and sell what that means one group is going to have power over all the wealth of the world period I believe this every if you have a family you need to consult the father by his words of what he said for you to do because you're supposed to be able or prepared for your family you're supposed to be prepared for your family if I tell you what those of you who have close to nothing and you there's no way you can prepare the Lord will prepare for you see I've seen him do that too believe me those who cannot physically prepare for things the Lord is with you whatever you cannot do he will do you just make sure you give a hundred percent of yourself be honest with him because he already knows everything about you but if you can't afford to get this out of I'm telling you he's already made provision for you that's a good thing about our Lord he already made provision for you for his children his people he already did it some people right now collecting up things in their homes and that will be given to the children of the Most High you know why he said a time will come where the wealth of the wicked will be stored up for the just Ta -da. you see that so they prepared but they won't be able to enjoy the, the preparedness state that they set because their hearts were wrong if they don't belong to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they can easily be plucked up but you're protected that's why you shouldn't worry you should never worry and if you do worry that means you're not trusting the Lord enough you know what you can be prepared for everything but I'm telling you this now when you run out of food then you're really going to be tested peanuts can go a long way you'd be shocked noodles can go a long way dried noodles they can go a long way you'd be shocked if you have bleach you can extract water from a great many places other people cannot there's a lot of things you can do to survive and the Lord will guide his children into all those ways or pair you up with someone who knows how to do it and because I'm so active I'm, I don't know I need the I'll need the protein but you see I, my body has been through a shock because I don't require the calories that the average person my size requires most people eat well over their their, their needs or their bodies I, I don't do that I can eat 50% of what a guy my size requires calorie wise and I can survive healthy because I've changed my diet a long time ago so that if anything happens or if I was ever in a hot spot where I couldn't get food and water this first time I went 14 days with no food I had a little water but I'm gonna tell you something 14 days with no food you'll start dreaming about stuff 
daydreaming about food. It can play, it can wreak psychological havoc on your mind. From that point on, I said, nope, I'm changing my diet. Now I can go, if I go four, five, six, seven days with no food, believe me, I can handle it, I can deal with it. My body knows what to expect. But if you have not done that, you're still, you know, you're eating because you have a taste for this and taste for that. An abrupt change can psychologically change a little bit. Things are really happening all over the place, but not really. I think what they're doing is they're going to keep that under wraps for now. But like I keep saying, these things are going to become unavoidable. Sooner or later, uh, astronomers, amateur astronomers, will begin to see things docking, pairing up with the International Space Station. They'll see much larger objects behind the International Space Station, large, like 50 times larger, that just look black with the naked eye, so there's no way you can see them with the naked eye, but um, with the light refractions, or you get very close to them, you can see how large these things are. But listen, we, again, we did not stop the space program in the 60s. We did not stop the space program in the 60s. They have their public, NASA, and then there's the actual NASA, which is responsible for Earth's defense systems. The Navy has vessels out there in space. The Air Force has vessels in space. The Army has weaponry in space. The, the, what we endeavor to do since the 40s has not stopped even to this day. But it's going to become unavoidable and people will begin to see it. And I think that a lot of people will then say, like they're saying now, because listen, people are having experiences. And then all of a sudden they decide, I don't believe in God anymore. This is what they're doing all over the place. They're saying, I don't believe in God anymore. If you're footing in the Lord Jesus Christ this week right now, and you desire to have everlasting life, and you love him and want to be with him, I encourage you to get back into the Gospels of Jesus Christ and begin to live by his word so that you have practical application for the words that you read. They need to become intimately intertwined into your life so you can live with the word every single day. Then your hope won't be lost, nor will it be shaken, nor will you doubt the Father or second guess him. If you're living by his words, your faith will not be shaken. But if you're not, and you're constantly looking for proof, alternatives, and this, that, and the other, you, you're going to fall away. Certainly those who look for proof. If you need proof that the Lord is who he says he is, you, you probably will fall away. I don't need proof. My soul bears witness. I exercise my faith when it comes to the Lord, and in reality, I exercise my faith. So faith is an intimate part of my life. Well, those are the unavoidable things. The moon will change unavoidable. Other planets, their moons will change, unavoidable. The monolith on both Phobos and Eros will be explained, unavoidable. The monolith on the moon will be explained, unavoidable. The symmetric structures of pyramids on the moon and on Mars and on the Earth will be explained, unavoidable. Not many people even know that the Hopi Indians have the same setup. In Arizona, as the Egyptians did, but they didn't make it, nor did the Egyptians, but they were guided where to put these things. Very simple, that they lived with the fallen angels, and some of the Indians were warned by real angels, warned, and they were told that Jesus, you know what, nobody shares the stories about some of the Indians who were expressly, um, they, they were introduced to Jesus Christ. They carbon dated the stones. The stones are old. They were told about Jesus Christ. Nobody ever tells those stories. They never do. You see, the fact is true. We have a choice. We serve one of two kingdoms. Your eternal life depends on the one that you choose every single day. All of them cohabitated with demons of uh, Mandy, but then a lot of them were told about Jesus Christ and they wrote it down. Notice Israel was formed after the flood, which means everybody but Noah was cohabitating with these things. Everybody but Noah and his family were cohabitating. The entire world was corrupt. That's why God flooded the earth. That's why Michael, Gabriel, and Uriel threw comets at the earth prior to that. That exploded. 
killing all the most the Nephilim, whatever was not killed, was killed by the flood. But then some lived after the flood also. Because the Bible says there were Nephilim before the flood and also after that. And they're still out there. The entire world cohabitated with these things. Egypt did it. Persia did it. Over here in the Americas, it happened here too. Max, all lands did it. That's why the entire earth was flooded. All flesh was corrupted, even the beasts, even the animals. And now it's happening again. People are being taken from their homes and their reproductive organs being snatched and mixed with things. Then they lie to them and tell them, yes, you're special. That's why we're doing this, you're special. Some of them present themselves as spirits to people. And they're doing the same thing, taking reproductive material from male and female. And they're creating another vessel for these evil spirits that roam the earth because they don't have bodies so their parents are making bodies the fallen angels are once again making bodies for these things no doubt they're mixed between human and bugs animals and fish and uh, the everything birds and crocodiles you name it you name it any abominable formation of cells that they can make they probably made it which will, what if, what if, in Revelation, these locusts that come out of this pit look exactly like they're described with the hair of a woman? And, and they're not human at all. What if they're its? Yes, they're in plant. Well, most of the craft have plant cells in them. And yes, they do uh, mix plant cells with their stuff. You have to remember the fallen angel. They know about the biology of Earth. They know about the intimacies of Earth. They know how to um, mix and, and, and mingle everything. And then in the book of Daniel, it did say they would mingle their seed with man's seed, but they would not cleave. That word cleave means to embrace. They wouldn't physically mate with people, but they would still mingle their seed with man's seed. They're going to mingle their seed, their, their genetic code, with man's genetic code. But they would not cleave, would not touch. And they're not. They're harvesting stuff. So, don't be shocked at things that are unfolding in the world. Don't be shocked when you find out that mankind uh, has been working with other life forms on this planet. Here in this world, don't be surprised that most of the big secrets around the globe are to cover up their existence. Certainly don't be described by, don't, don't be shocked by demonstration that will be presented to everybody. Don't be shocked by the stories you hear of a very violent race that is coming. We already know who's coming. Lucifer, the great red dragon, and the beast system. That beast is from the sea, the beast system. The beast, the antichrist, is the beast from the land. We already know they're coming. We know that he'll cause craft to prosper. We know that he will do lying signs and wonders and call down fire from the heavens. Because why? He'll be in control of all of these little UFO friends of his. You see, if he rises, so will these evil spirits in the world. That's why no one will be able to make war with him. They can't shoot down one of these things now. So those things can shoot down everything they like. And this guy is going to be in charge of them all. Has anybody ever thought of that? Take that with a bucket of salt. I mean, I can see this forming. It could be different, but I can see that scenario forming. He'll be in charge of those things. And no army can stand up against them. And by the way, they can give a type of life to anything, because even their ships are half alive and half not. They're biomechanoids. There's military equipment that they're basing off of the same technology. They need living cells in the machinery. Living cells they need in the machinery so they can accomplish a much more efficient system. Don't be shocked when these things come. Yes, the ships are alive. And they're old, ancient. Listen, this is ancient technology. Yet, there's no way we can replicate what they have built. Why? Because they're first creations of God and they have knowledge. You know, the book of Enoch says that they read, they, they are instructed in certain ways and they know what they're talking about, what they're doing. The only thing they don't know, they've been stripped of their ability to pray if they can't see their children anymore. But they do certainly know about technology and life forms on this planet. We can't be foolish about that. They still can't touch you because they've been here since before you were born. 
and they can't get to me. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.